Welcome to video four, which I've entitled Preparing a Monthly Budget. Now, we do this in video four because soon, after we learn how to keep track of our money personally, uh, in a couple of videos, we're going to actually start a business and learn how to do the accounting for the business. But recall from our last uh, video, Calculating Your Personal Net Worth, we calculated that the beginning cash for a student was $100. Okay, that was, well, let's put BB over here on the left for beginning balance for the month. The student also owned an iPhone, a laptop, a car, and household effects. And if you'll recall, the iPhone, we assigned a value of 200, laptop 800, car 6,000, and household effects 2,000. And I'll put a box around each of these accounts. In accounting, when we label a particular asset or a liability, the label is called an account. So we've just labeled one, two, three, four, five assets under the category, or accounts under the category assets. Now recall from last video three, we also had a credit card payable and a student loan payable with a value of 200 and 3,000. Therefore, the beginning assets had to equal the liabilities plus the net worth or um, equity. We'll just call this equity here. We only have one account there, so we'll have equity of 5,900. Now, a college student has to manage his money or her money very carefully because uh, most of the time they, students may have a part-time job or get an allowance from their parents. Um, and of course, with that money, they have to pay rent and buy groceries. So let's, for now, assume that this student has a job and at the end of each month, the wages earned from this job are $300. If cash goes up at the end of the month and it doesn't affect our liabilities, we haven't paid off our credit card or we haven't borrowed any more money, we're gonna add 300 to our net worth. This is a transaction. That means cash comes into the uh, student and cash goes up, equity goes up, and we gotta make sure that we balance cash up, equity up. And now we have a running total of 400 in cash and 6,200 in equity. Next, this student is going to get an allowance from parents. And let's say the parents send the student $400 during the month for living expenses. If the student doesn't have to pay this money back, then net worth goes up $400 as well. We still equal. Every time something happens to the left of the equation, something must happen to the right of the equation in an equal manner. Always adhering to the fundamental accounting identity, assets always equal liabilities plus equity. Now, let's say the student pays her rent at the be uh, beginning of the month. In the budget, let's say the rent is $250. She shares an apartment with other students. We subtract 250 from rent, and I put parentheses around this, but you could also make it a negative, a minus 250, or maybe put it in red. But in any case, when I put brackets around here, that means cash has gone down, and so has our net worth, because we are paying our rent, and, uh, and that is known as a monthly expense. Increases in equity over here, the 300 and 400 are revenues. Decreases in equity as a result of normal monthly outflows of cash are called expenses. Let's say the student also plans to pay utilities of $50. Cash down, net worth down. Also, the student has to have some fun during the month. The student plans to go to the movies twice and will spend uh, $10 at each movie uh, for the uh, fare uh, or the um, uh, cost to get into the movie and maybe a treat. So the student is budgeting 20 there for entertainment expense. Student has to eat, so buying groceries during the month, let's say the student budgets 
for the month, which would be $20 a month for groceries. And then we got to pay off that credit card. I wonder if the student has enough money to pay off all the credit card. Let's look here. He starts with 100 plans on generating $700 from his parents and his job. That's $800. The student plans to spend 300 there and another 100 there. That's $400. It's a pretty good idea to pay off your credit cards during the month. And here, if we pay the credit card, that is not an expense this month. It's paying off a liability or a debt. So here, cash goes down, credit card payable goes down. So it's now important to note, at the end of the month, we can see we started with 100 we earned 700 that's $800, we've incurred $400 worth of expenses, and we've also paid $200 in our credit card debt. So our cash outflows are 600 here, our inflows were 700 If we started with 100 we took in 700 that's $800, we've expended 600 so we should have $200 left at the end of the month. Now let me move this up just a little here. Let's make sure we balance at the end of the month. We have an iPhone still worth 200, laptop 800, car 6000, household effects $2000. Our liabilities we now owe zero on the credit card. We still owe $3000 on our student loan. So our assets now let's add them up. Our 200, 400, Plus 8 is 1,200, plus 6,000 is 7,200, plus 2,000 is 9,200. So our total assets are 9,200. Our total liabilities are 3,000. So if I've done my math correctly, equity should end up here with 9,200 less 3,000 is 6,200. Let's prove this by adding up all changes in equity. We started with 5,900. We added 700. That gives us 6,600. We subtracted from equity how much? 300 and another 100. That'd be a subtraction of 400. So we started with 5,900. We added 7 to get 6,600. We now subtract 400. Yes, we get 6,200. You have just completed your cash budget for the, month, uh, for the month in which you've gone to school here. Let me summarize. You started with 100. You took in 700 more in cash, giving you 800. You planned to spend $600, ending with 200. Now we haven't changed any of these other accounts because we've assumed that they've not gone down in value, but we'll get to that a little later. This ends number four, lesson number four, preparing a monthly budget.